So hello everyone. Again, we have uh, Christian Dalhausen from the University of Zurich, who will talk to us about continuous K-theory and K-theory of the risky Riemann spaces. Thank you very much for this invitation and for the occasion to speak here. Um, so I will tell you something about continuous K-theory and later on the K-theory of the risky Riemann spaces. And I try to keep things basic and yeah, to focus on, on like an, an, an overview and not just to some particular results. Um, so there won't be that many proofs inside. I want to start with a um, short um, recall on algebraic K theory. Um, so this should have been a way, okay. Okay, so we have, um, I mean, algebraic K theory nowadays we, um, I mean, compose it as we take the universal localized invariant, a la Bloomberg Kepner Tabuada, which is some functor from the um, infinity category of stable infinity categories with exact functors, and um, to the category of spectra. And for quasi compact, quasi separated schemes, um, we associate the perfect complexes. And then by composing, we get the K theory, and this is like all the, the Here's the classic K theory group a la um, Thomas and Rebaud. And in, in nice cases, and this will all cases be relevant today, um, if the scheme has an ample family of line bundle, then this is also the K theory um, Quillen defined. Okay. Um, and what we have to know about K theory, for one thing, it, it is a Sarisky sheath, so this yields um, my Viltoris. It means whenever we have an open covering of, of X by U and V, and then the section is W, so that we have a bi um, Cartesian square, then we get a um, Cartesian square of spectra and an associated Maya Vitora sequence. So this is one tool for computing K theory. Another tool is the localization sequence. So whenever we have a closed subscheme of a scheme and look at the open complements, then we get um, a fiber sequence like this. I mean, you can also just take it as a definition if you want. Um, but here, the, the fiber K theory of X on on Z, it has also, I mean, a, a description in terms of like perfect complexes supported, perfect complexes on X which are supported on Z. Um, so this will be used several times today. Another um, thing for negative K groups is bus fundamental sequence. So this was, um, we have a following exact sequence. So we have the K group, the 8K group of some scheme. And then we um, can go to the affine um, line. So this is just um, A1X. And the T is just to indicate the, the parameter. And we have another I'm um, copy of that with a, like the parameter denoted by T minus one. And the map is just a diagonal map, the induced map in each component. And then we can go to um, GM, so the general linear, so the um, multiplicative group, GMX. And here we take the plus minus map, so the plus map in the first component and the second map in the, and the minus the other map in the second component in here. This, I mean, has even a split. Um, yeah, I won't say anything on this construction here. So init initially, Bas proved this only for rings, and it was a theorem for for him. It was um, in, in these days, it was a theorem for i equal to um, one. So it was a statement between the classic um, classical group K naught and K one, and then he used this as a definition for his negative k groups. So definition for i less or equal than zero. To iteratively define um, the negative k groups. If the scheme is regular, then we have no, we don't have any um, negative um, k groups and k theory is homotopy invariant. I assume this is well known. 
So this also implies that K theory is, is KH theory for regular schemes. Um, and one thing we need today is post CDH descent. So this is the following. Um, when we have an abstract blow up square, so what is this? We have a um, square of schemes, which is Cartesian, um, induced by a closed immersion and a map which is proper. And the condition is that um, on the complement we have an isomorphism. So the induced map on the complement, on the open complement, should be um, an isomorphism. So this is an abstract blow up square. And I mean, particular examples are blow-up squares. Whenever you have a, a closed subscheme and a, of a scheme, and you take the blow-up, then we get an even projective map, and this is always um, an isomorphism away from the center. And now this is a little bit similar to what we had with the Maya Torres property. Um, property. So we can also consider, look at the topology generated by these squares, and maybe also by the Zariski topology. Then we have the RH topology. And um, if K theory was a sheaf, then with respect to this topology, then the following square would be Cartesian. Um, K set here, like the induced square of K series spectra. And for KH theory, this would be a Cartesian square. But the general result is, um, so we have to assume that X is an Assyrian, that we have a modified square to be Cartesian. And the modified square is the following. So we look at the pro limit of all the thickenings of the closed subscheme. And this happens now in the, in the category of Prospector. So objects in the category of prospector can be characterized as um, directed systems with um, home spaces, um, yeah, with some limb co limit um, definition with respect to the home space in the category of specter. And so what is these thickenings? I mean, a closed subscheme is always defined by an ideal sheaf. And this is a one-to-one -one correspondence, and so you have the closed subscheme. You have to um, set. Then this corresponds to an ideal sheaf, say J, of O X. And now we can look at the powers of this ideal sheaf, and this these corresponds to other closed subschemes. Um, and this is a pro system, and the same we are doing for E. And then this square is um, what is called weakly Cartesian in the category of prospector. Um, but I won't, um, so, I mean, I won't say too much today about these issues between weakly Cartesian and Cartesian. So um, just one word maybe. Um, I mean, if you pass to the pro category of um, bounded above spectra, then this would be Cartesian. And weakly something always means by passing to this category, it is something. Okay, um, and now the question is, how can we make a case theory for non archimedean analytic spaces? Um, how can something like this look like? So let me, for this, um, recall, make some recollections on non archimedean analytic spaces. Um, so the base, so in, in classical algebraic geometry, we are doing like, have a base field, or maybe a algebraically closed base field, and in non-Archimedean geometry or in analytic geometry, we always have a topological field. And in our case, we have a non-Archimedean field. So a non-Archimedean field is a field um, which has a topology and is complete with respect to the topology. And the topology is induced by an absolute value, like a norm map, um, which additionally satisfies the um, ultramatic inequality. So that the norm of, two, of the sum of two elements is less or equal than the maximum 
of the nodes. Yeah. And I mean, examples for this are, um, I mean, you can look at the rational number and next to the classical absolute value for every prime number, we have an p adic absolute value, and then you can take the completion qp, or we can, um, yeah, if we want to have something algebraically closed, then we take cp, which is, you take qp, which is not algebraically closed, you take the closure, which is not necessarily complete, and then you complete, and then this is a theorem that this is, it remains to be algebraically closed. And another class of examples, so these are like the mixed characteristic examples and the equal characteristic examples is you, you take some finite field, um, FQ, and then we take um, power series and this is the um, p adic valuation. Okay. Um, and now there are several approaches how one can define analytic spaces. So this was a general theorem by, by Fair um, that just like defining spaces as locally by converging power series um, is not a good theory because then like every n-dimensional space would just be a, a, a disjoint union of balls. Um, and so the first um, approach to overcome this is rigid spaces. So in general, the basic building blocks of this theory are a finite algebra, so the building blocks are finite algebras as compared to algebras of, of finite type in, in classical algebraic geometry. In classical algebraic geometry, you take polynomial ring of the field and you mod out a finite number of equations, and here, um, we're doing the same, but I mean almost the same, but we take convergent power series. So we have this ring of convergent power series. So this is a subring of the ring of formal power series with a convergence condition on the component um, on the coefficient. And then we mod out um, finitely many power series. And an affinite algebra is, is something which is isomorphic to this without the choice of an isomorphism. And then, like, using, um, yeah, one cannot, like, use, um, like, the topologies you maybe come up with in first instance, which you, which you want to impose on, on some spaces, for instance, what usually one does is one takes spaces, the spectrum, the maximal spectrum of A, which is, as I said, just the maximal ideals, maximal prime ideals of A. But like naive guesses for this making a topology of space out of this doesn't does not work. And so Tate came um, up with the idea to like introduce some um other topology, which is called the admissible topology. But now the disadvantage of this is this is not actually a topological space. It is only a Grotendieck topology. So considering a category whose objects are so-called admissible subsets of this set, then these admissible subsets satisfy the axiom of a Grotendieck topology. And then Tate defined rigid spaces um, in terms of this. And I mean, you had, he had to define a suitable um, category of so-called so locally G-ring spaces, which replaces the category of locally ring spaces. And then he defined rigid spaces as um, these spaces, which locally looks like coming from this construction here. I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I, I cannot really go into any details here, but just like for you to remind you of things you might have already read somewhere. Um, just for you, important to know is, I mean, there is a category of rigid spaces, which um, yeah, has 
some good properties, but the, the disadvantage is that it's not actually topological spaces. Then another approach was by um, formal schemes. Um, so formal schemes are defined usually over, um, for instance, over complete valuation rings. So in our non archimedean field, K, we have a valuation ring, which is just all the elements um, which has norm lesser equal than one. And according to the non archimedean triangle inequality here on the top, this is a subring and this is a valuation ring. And then one looks at not at the finite algebras, but at algebras topologically of finite type, which is like basically the same definition, but we replace um, the field by the valuation ring. And each such topologically finite type algebra is an affinite algebra just by tensoring up to K. And to these, one can associate um, formal spectrum, and this is now a locally ring space, and this just can be defined as the co-limit in the category of topologically um, ring spaces of um, all these, um, you take the spectra of these mod sum, okay, and now I assume for um, simplicity here that this has, um, you take a not topologically nearest potent um, element. in this valuation ring. So an element with powers converge to zero, and then you take the spectra of this, and then you take um, the co-limit of this. So as a topological space, this is just the same as the spectrum of A0 mod pi, but the um, structure sheet is now a sheaf of, of complete rings, and the global sections is precisely the thing we started with. Uh, and then inside the category of... Um, sorry, do you mean A0 mod pi to the n? Ah, yeah, this should be an n, yes, thank you. Thank you. And then one can define the category of like formal um, schemes over, say, K0 as like the full subcategory of topologically ringed spaces, which locally um, look like um, formal spectra, and this has comes with a functor to the category of Richard spaces. So I didn't introduce this notation, so this is the category of Richard spaces, and this is locally given, like locally is this just given by you take the formal spectrum of an algebra of topologically finite type, and you tensor up with um, K, and you map SPFA um, not here to the SPM of A not tensor K not K. And then you can show that everything is compatible with gluing and we get a functor and restricted to the um, subcategory of quasi compact, quasi separated things. This is essentially subjective. And then it was a theorem of um, Renault that um, there is a certain class, which I will come to later, which is so-called um, admissible formal blow-ups. So for the moment, just Keep in mind, so there is some certain class of morphisms, um, and if you localize after them, you get an equivalent of categories. So these admissible blow-ups, I mean, these are morphisms which, I mean, as you as you now see, yield the same which is space. And like, if you think in the language of schemes, then these are like 
given by blow-ups with center is concentrated in the this, in this special fiber, so in the complement of the open subset given by spectrum of K. Um, yeah. So this will be used, um, like not literally loose, but morally, this description of the category of rigid spaces will be used later. So you can identify some rigid space, you can find a form scheme, which is called a model, and then you can look at all admissible blow-ups of this model and like all them together yield a, a description of, of the rigid space you started with. Okay. Another approach is Berkowitz spaces, which um, I don't want to say anything today. So you also have some affinite algebra and then you um, can associate a so-called Berkowitz space. And this is again a topological space. And this is Hausdorff, this is locally path connected. So it has, um, and it has a sheath. It has some good properties, but um, it's not a locally ring space. Um, and like, maybe nowadays the best um, approach is, is to look at adic spaces. So in adic spaces, you take the affinite algebra and you also have to specify some um, subring. And this subring corresponds like to elements which are um, like on the unit disk, so it gives you the unit disk. And then you can also associate some topological space together with a sheaf. Um, and here, um, the good thing is that, I mean, these are um, spectral spaces. They are sober, um, coherent. Um, and yeah, I mean, these are spaces with good properties and these are locally ring spaces and they even like, they even have a second structure sheaf and the second structure sheaf is Subsheaf of the first structure sheaf, which tells you like which elements have normal or equal in one, um, in principle. So just for um, yeah. So I'm sorry that I, I really cannot provide any details, and most of the talk will focus on the on the Affinity situation. I just wanted to um, yeah recall a little bit. And the situation now is is, is as follows. So um, so these addict spaces were defined by Huber. And Huber constructed um, fully faithful functors from like category of formal schemes, to, like all category of, of adic spaces. And from the category of rigid spaces, the category of adic spaces and here we had this functor which sends like a formal scheme which locally was defined by tensoring up and this is usually denoted with an eta in the index it's called the generic fiber functor but it is like it is not a generic fiber in the sense that you are in some category and you have are over some base and then you pass to the pre-image of the generic fiber but the good thing is in like passing to the category of adic spaces, this is really just such a functor where you really pass to the generic fiber of, of your base. Um, okay, so are there any, I mean, I'm sorry for that this is really brief. So are there any questions on, on this global things which won't be too relevant for the talk? Is the top morphism also faithful? Hmm? I didn't understand, excuse me. Oh, so yeah, is the top morphism also faithful about a front thing? Um, yeah, from the formal schemes to rigid spaces. Mm, no, 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 no. Um, so the, the, the general philosophy is always when you have your situation on the right hand side and you have some model, then usually you have to find, you always find some blow up where you can realize the morphism. So whenever, so it is not faithful. Ah yeah, 
So maybe let me say one more word. So this is not just an equivalence of categories, but this also leads like an equivalence of sites. So we have here, I mean, a notion of of covering, and a cover usually does not come from a cover here, but passing to like the localization after admissible formal blow-ups, and you can make sense out of this to have to make this a site. Then you can realize the cover here, and this means that whenever you have here a, a, a rigid space which is covered by say two open rigid subspaces, and you have some arbitrary model X, then this usually does not have an open cover, um, which is sent to the cover we started with. But what is true, we always find an admissible blow up and a cover here, such that passing to the generic fiber, we get the initial cover. So this also leads um, a coherence between categories of sheets here and here, um, the co-limit of the categories of sheets here along all admissible blow-ups. This is six some base. Okay. So now let's come to continuous case theory. Um, so if we have a complete I are the ring, so this is um, I is an I is a ring, I is an ideal, and it induces a topology, and then so the name, the powers of the ideal are open neighborhoods of zero, and then we have an isomorphism between R and all the powers of I n. This is not just in the category of rings, but this is also in the category of topological rings, where we script these guys here with the um, discrete topology. And now you might guess that, and like, if you have something discrete, then a topologically, a case theory which should take the topology into account should be maybe the same as algebraic case theory. And this is one thing what, what continuous case theory does. So the continuous case theory of R is defined as um, the following. We just make it compatible with this limit. So we take the limit of all n, and then we take algebraic case theory of the quotients modulo the powers of n. And again, as in the center of setting of post CDH descent, we do this in a formal sense. So we don't actually take the limit, but we make this here in the category of pro-spectra. And then you always can pass to the category of spectra by really actually taking the limit. So yeah, and this is why it's called I mean, it's called continuous because like it, it commutes with this particular form of this limit. Um, so and then one can um, one can show um, that the first um, K theory is just you take. K on one of the of the ring. So in nice cases, this is just units, and then we mod out by the um, subgroup generated by elements of these forms. So these yield units, since the ideal is complete, all these elements of the form is unit, and then we take the limit over this. So this is really a progroup which is not constant. So we have a fully faithful um, embedding here, mapping every spectrum to a constant spectrum, and the same for abelian groups, and here passing to the homo to a homotopy groups, this is something not constant. Then um, this, in degree zero, this is just the K-theory of R, because the K-theory, K-zero, is um, invariant with respect to modding out complete ideals. And for negative case theory, 
it is the same as modding out just the ideal. So the difference is here that in negative degrees, K theory is only invariant with respect to modding out nil potent ideals. And I mean, one I, I mean, I is always nil potent in, in modding out one higher power of this subject. So what you see here is, in particular, is that, the, um, that these groups are constant. And this is good for us because um, usually, for instance, in some situations we want to deal with like co-limits and if we have co-limits of this post system, they, they're usually not well behaved and in, in constant situations, um, things are behaved much better. Christian, so, may I ask mm -hmm. you, uh, why does it happen for negative groups that they are constant? Is there some simple explanation? Or, or no? um, because the system is a constant system, because all the maps here, I mean, you have the maps from induced by the maps of the rings, and they are all isomorphisms. Because negative case theory is nil invariant. So what you're doing here is you look, um, you have K, I. Yeah, I guess I was asking you why is that? I and K, I of um, R, I square and so on. I hope the direction is, is um, and the direction is wrong. So you have maps in the other direction, which does not. Um, yeah. So the map goes from the right to the left and all these maps are um, isomorphisms. Okay, thanks. So it's pro-isomorphic to, I mean, it's to a constant state. Okay. Um, so one example is we can take the periodic integers, we take um, two adjoint variables, and then we look at the equation y squared minus x, um, like, like x cubed minus x squared, and this yields a node like this. So this is singular. But what we can do is we can add some small thing, for instance, p. <laughs> and that's then this ring becomes regular. So you can imagine then like that the graph now looks a little bit like, maybe like this. So, and they don't touch anymore here at the origin. And what I told you before is that the negative case theory of regular schemes vanishes. But here we have then that, for instance, k minus one, the continuous k minus one, if the algebraic minus one of R mod P, and if P is not equal to two, then this is classical, this is the integers. And this comes from the fact that you have like, in this, if you reduce mod P, then you have this loop here, and for like nice curves, the K minus one is always a free abelian group and the rank is like the number of loops which can be made precise. Yeah. So this is one um, big difference to, to algebraic case. We, you can plug in regular things and you have negative, negative K groups. Um, so how long do I have actually? Because I, um, when did we start? Which... Mm. So I think we started uh, around five minutes later. So. Okay. And now the question is how to um, extend to a finite algebra. And as a comparison note, for instance, how do you define ethyl cohomology with QL coefficients? So what are you doing? You're taking the limit of ethyl cohomology with, with finite coefficients mod L and then you tensor up it again. And the first thing is like similar what we have done. We have taken like the limit of the K series with like modding out something. And so in the same spirit, we can define um, K series for affinity, continuous K series for affinity algebras. But we can also do this in a little general, more general setting, which is the setting of tatering. So let me first define what a tatering is. So a tatering is a topological ring A 
such that we have an open subring. We have called a not. This is an open subring. And if there is a an element which is a topologically near potent topologically near potent non zero divisor such that A is A not localized at the inverse of pi and A not has the pi adic topology. So it has the, so the subspace topology as an open subring of A con coincides with the pi adic topology. And examples for this is, um, yeah. We have, for instance, QP and QP. We have as open subring the P adding numbers and then you invert P. Or, I mean, the other example in equal characteristic is you take um, like FP, T. And here you have um, FPT power series, and you invert T. Okay, and in the, our situation, when we have a non Archimedean field and we have this valuation ring, and we have an affinite algebra then these are tape rings and we can just, for instance, choose, I mean, this is just a choice, but we make such a choice, and then we can choose a not to be the same, like almost the same thing. We can, like, now there's two possibilities, so we can, like, we can always lift the power series since they're convergent the valuation ring and then we mod out and then we get this ring A0 and this is called a ring of definition. Okay and then it was an idea by, by Matthew Morrow no, to sorry, define the... Mm -hmm. uh, can you say who is pi in this example? Because... Ah. Yeah, here pi in the first thing, pi is... Yeah. In the first two examples, hmm. sure. I mean... In... And in the second one, okay, this is maybe not right. Usually you take um, here minus one and then inverse of t minus one. So no, here no, usually sure. pi is, is t minus one. No. These are not the, the examples I was asking about. I was asking about the case of the affinoid algebra. Ah, in this, um, I mean, you can just choose um, pi with um, norm less than one. Okay, so you're giving to A not the pyadic topology, not not uh, the topology of uniform convergence or anything like that? No, I add one, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, in our situation, there will always be like a maximal choice of pi because later we will restrict to um, discreetly re discrete valuation rings. But I mean, there's also settings, for instance, if you have perfect rings where there's like no maximal choice um, of these pi's, yeah. Okay. So now and then in the same spirit as etal cohomology, um, continuous K theory is now defined as follows. So we make the choice of such a ring of definition A naught for some tapering A. 
And then we get a map of algebraic K series from K series of the ring of definition to the K series of the tight ring. And we also have a map from the K series of the ring of definition to the continuous K series of the ring of definition. So here we use that the ring of definition is a pi adic ring, and so this was is just defined as um, by the definition we made before as the limit over all um, algebraic k-series of a naught or pi for some, yeah, and this, this pi is usually called the pseudo uniformizer. And then um, continuous k-series is defined to be here the push out. In the category of closed spectra. And since the category of spectra is stable, this category is also, the pro category is also stable. Um, so this push out is also a pullback. And we have here like a classical. Um, the fiber, the, 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 the algebraic fiber, so the fiber in the, to, in, the, in the top row is this relative K-theory. And now let me just denote this with a pi in our situation. Um, so we can compute in, in this K-theory, like in, in theory, continuous K-theory of such a tapering only by means of algebraic tape theory. So we look at here the limit over all the K-theories of the thickenings of the special fiber, and then we look at this relative part here, and then, yeah. Okay. And Kert Saito Tamil, what did they? Um, so there's just on the archive a short note by Matthew Morrow where he makes this definition, and, and everything is less, just a little bit sketchy, and like the most um, things about continuous case theory are developed by Kert, Saito, and Tamme in their article, and they prove that this continuous case theory satisfies some analytic variant of bus fundamental theory, which is that, and now for every um, i in the integers, we have a short exit sequence k i of our tapering, then Instead of the polynomial rings, we have the rings of formal power series converging on a unit disk. And then again, a second copy of that with inverse parameter. And then we have the Analytic Laurent series and then we have the group in one degree less. And what we see from this is that these continuous K groups are actually groups which, in, in, in negative degrees, are actually groups which have, have been studied earlier by Karubi and Villamayor, because in the 70s, Karubi and Villamayor tried to find a way of describing also KCV for, um, for algebras, with like for, for Banach algebras. And in the, in the complex case, it yielded the, the classical top, complex case theory. And in the non Archimedean case, um, so the definition was they looked at precisely such a ring of convergent power sequence and defined it in the same way as bus, defined the negative K groups iteratively here as the co-kernel of this map here. So um, this is just like K I agrees with groups of Karubi Villamayor. So I just want to mention this, that you see that this, I mean, this is something from like 70s. 
the 70s. For I am positive. Okay. Um, and now I want to remind you to this definition of rigid spaces in terms of formal models. And in the other end, we had this subcategory of admissible blow-ups, and now I want to make this definition at least in the affine situation, because in the affine situation we can make it within the category of schemes. So I say that an admissible blow-up is a projective map to the spectrum of our ring of definition. So now we make a choice of the swing of definition, and I didn't say this before, but this continuous case theory does not really depend on this choice. I mean, it's up to weak equivalence, it does not depend on this choice. So we fix this choice, and then we have a projective um, map, which, I mean, now as you probably can imagine, is an isomorphism over spec A. So we have here spec A naught, then spec A as an open subscheme, and we want that the base change here is an isomorphism. And now let me introduce some notation. Um, let me denote with x mod pi the base change to a naught. So the complement of a in spec a naught is spec a naught mod pi. And we will denote this base change here which I call special fiber for x mod pi, and the same um, for every power of, of pi, of course. So this is an admissible blower. And for them, we can also define continuous case theory, just like the same way we did it for, for adic rings. So we define it also as the formal limit over the algebraic case theory of all the thickenings of the special fiber in the category of prospector. And then Kat Saito Thomas showed that you can compute continuous case theory of our tate ring also by means of such an admissible blow up, at least if A naught is an Ethereum. So if there is a ring of definition A naught, which is an Ethereum, then we have a fiber sequence where we can replace X by the ring of definition. Um, so then we have here the relative part, which is only algebraic case theory. We have the continuous case theory of the admissible blow up and the continuous case theory of A. And by fiber sequence, I mean, mean weak fiber sequence. And just let me say why do we need an Ethereum net? So the proof uses um, pro CDH descent. I mean, as you remember from the pro CDH descent statement, there was this formal limit, which is just continuous case theory. And so you have a pro CDH descent square with the case theory of our ring of definition A naught, the case theory of X, and the continuous case theory of the same guys. 
and then you get you you find a sequence of squares where in three edges is a fiber sequence and the fourth edge is this sequence where you then see also that this is a fiber sequence so this is for cdh descent plus formal blah blah Um, yeah, and this is now like the disadvantage because this enforces us always to pass to the um, situation where our non-Archimedean field is actually discretely valued. Um, so this is a huge restriction because usually in non-Archimedean geometry you also consider, I mean, algebraically closed, complete non-Archimedean fields. And using this, one can show that continuous case theory is a sheaf in the Nesterian case. So for any non-Archimedean field K with discrete valuation, and this makes our valuation ring to be a discrete valuation ring. The assignment from affinoid K algebra to um, the category of prospector So finite algebras are all tailings, so we have continuous K theory, and this is a sheaf with respect to this admissible topology. So this implies that here we can, this is a full subcategory of the category of Richard spaces, and this implies we get an extended continuous K theory for all rigid spaces. Christian, is there, a question? there is a question on the chat uh, that might be interesting. Does this story work for any localizing invariant? I mean, I, I guess you can make the same definitions for any localizing invariant. Do the theorems hold? It does hold for all um, variants to satisfy pro CDH descent. Um, So my, it's my question. So, you know, any localizing invariant satisfies pro CDH descent. So I think the construction works. And I wonder if the proposition, at least this localization holds for such local, localizing invariant. I mean, if pro CDH descent works, then yes. Okay, okay cool, yeah. Um, so let me indicate how the proof works. Um, so the proof works. Um, so this is basically just the local situation of what we had before from this equivalence of formal schemes localized as admissible formal blobs to the category of rigid spaces. So now when we have here in affinite algebras, in affinite, some affinite algebra, then it suffices to check um, the sheaf condition if we have a covering given by two affinite algebras, and then you can always arrange that also the intersection is given by an affinite algebra. And then you have to realize this cover on the level of some model. So on the level of here, these axes above. And to be able to do this, I mean, you won't be able to realize this cover already at the ring of definition A0, but you always find some admissible blow up where you can realize the cover. And then on the level here in the middle of the sequence, you get like the descent induced by the risky descent as well here at the left hand side. And then using this proposition, you get descent here also on the right hand side. So you see that also that you need pro CDH descent that this extends to a sheet. So this is one of like disadvantage that is not like 
you have not a rigid space and you look at some category of perfect something and then you plug it into some case theory machine. So you, it's a kind of ad hoc dis description. You define it locally and then you show that it, it, it can be, um, it, it glues to a sheath. So I think, um, I mean, a more elegant approach is what like Dustin Clausen talked about two weeks ago in the electronic algebra case theory seminar that you like do it in terms of attic spaces and condensed spectra and then um, what the, at least what they expect is this should yield the same theory. Okay. Um, and now let me come to the case theory of sarisky riemann spaces and how this relates to that. Um, So again, look at here this fiber sequence. And then we know by theorem of, of, of CARES that at least the negative case theory by passing like to the co-limit of all admissible blow up, here this fiber vanishes. It means the negative case theory, we can have a description of the continuous case theory of the tapering in terms of the continuous case theory of our um, of the all ad, of, of all admissible blow up. Um, so this motivates us to define the following. Um, So we define the sarisky riemann space, but in like a more a, a relative sarisky riemann space as the limit over all these admissible blow-ups of A0 with respect to A. So all projective maps to A0, which are isomorphisms over A. And this we are doing in the category of locally ringed spaces. And then we get a dilemma, which follows like immediately from work of CARES, is that K, um, I of this Sarisky-Riemann space on pi, and what I mean with that is, I mean, by definition, this is the co-limit over all the relative K-series of the model, so this is just the co-limit over the, this K-series. This is zero for I, less than zero. And as a corollary, we get that continuous case theory in these negative degrees is defined, um, or is, is, is isomorph, is equivalent to the co-limit over the continuous case series Um, over all admissible formal blow-ups. And here we have some tricky thing is that ideally we wanted to study some continuous case theory of the form of the sarisky riemann space, but this is not the same because this here is a pro spectrum And filtered co-limits do not um, interchange with prospector. So um, the problem here is that this does not commute. So, sorry, uh, can you say a couple of words about how the K theory of uh, of this Zariski-Riemann space is defined? I mean, is the K 
Shea theory of locally free sheaves or? Um, so this is defined, I mean, you can define it just as the co-limit of <laughs> the K-series um, of the schemes. Um, but here we are in a very good situation. I mean, all schemes are here pro now quasi-projective of an affine scheme, so they have ample um, family of line bundles, so you can use the description in terms of vector bundles. Um, and then this guy here is just comes from the K-series really of um, vector bundles on the Sariski Riemann space. So one theorem one also has is that this K theory is equivalent to the G theory um, of the closed thing. So I write this much. High. And with G theory, I mean the K theory of the coherent guys. And this is like a statement which is classically true for regular schemes. So regular schemes um, uh, agree with their, and for regular schemes, K theory agrees with G theory. So and this is. And also for regular schemes, we have some homotopy invariants, and this is also what um, I can show is that we have an homotopy invariant here. So this is equivalent to the K-theory of like a fiber product with affine space. So here this is defined as you take the fiber product in each um, stage of the limit and then you take the limit. And then you have also here homotopy invariance, at least on the things um, over the special fiber, so at least on the relative part. And why we have to go to the relative part, this comes from the fact that um, we fix A. Um, so we can like, so the philosophy is that like by passing through all these blow ups, you can get rid of some singularities and if you get rid of the singularities, um, things behave nicely. But when we pass through like this relative Sariski Riemann space, we always fix spec A. And if spec, um, if A is not regular, then there's no chance that you get rid of the singularities in A. Um, but you always like get rid of the singularities, like this is like loosely speaking on the special fiber here. Um, so, um, so what now the current problem is in, 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 in work I'm doing now is like to look at, I mean, we have here this problem that the co-limit does not commute with continuous K theory and using this, Theorems here below, one like has a mean one get some results for for algebraic case theory, but if one wants to get um, results for for continuous case theory, there's always has to be a last step where we compare like the co-limit of this continuous case theory to the continuous case theories of the co-limit. Um, Yeah, so in order to to get a better understanding of this continuous
in this case theory. Um, I think it's 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 a good approach to to study more this, this continuous case theory of the sariski riemann space and study how I mean it behaves with with filtered co-limits or how you can like get rid of these um, situations at least in some situations and. One last remark is the following. So I told you that in negative degrees, this continuous case theory is constant. And in the constant case, we can shift the co-limit to the inside. Um, and this um, enabled me to the following, which was like the main result of my thesis is that in degree minus the dimension of A, this group has a description as the top cohomology groups of the associated rigid space of the affinity algebra with integral coefficients. And the proof worked exactly along these lines using the sariski riemann space. Um, and using that we have constant groups so that this problem with the co-limit does not appear. Yeah. I think now I'm also deep over time, so I'll stop here. So, okay, very quickly before we go to the break, are there any questions? Yeah, I've got one really quickly. Uh, so do you have any sort of um, comparison between the uh, continuous K theory of, of an attic space or like a, or, or a Tate ring um, uh, compared with what uh, Dustin was talking about like two weeks ago? Like, are there any maps even relating them? I can just, um, I mean, I cannot give any proof, which I don't know, but I can just know what I know from like Dustin's talk and from private communication. So in Dustin's talk, he defined like for some attic space, so we have maybe this A, A plus, um, and I think they ex like, they expected that this K theory, they had this epsilon of K theory, and then you have K theory for attic spaces. And I think they expected here that this, um, at least if you two, put in two times the same ring, then this should be the um, limit of, like, now this A plus is what usually was the, um, A not here. So this is what they expected, and this is in the category of spectra, but you can also enrich this into, into an equality, or like in, in a desired equality in the category of condensed spectra, where you look here at these as condensed rings, and these are constant like spectra, and then you take the limit in the category of condensed spectra. And if they can show this, then their case, case theory should be the same as the K theory, K theory um, as this continuous K theory because of the following, because they can show that in the category of condensed vector, they have um, a fiber sequence A naught on pi. So now this is a spectrum considered as a constant condensed spectrum. And then we have the limit over all a not not pi n. So now these are also considered as constant spectrum and the limit is taken in the category of condensed spectra. And here we get the following. So the affinity algebra is a condensed ring. So this is by looking at continuous maps from some profile set 
into the affinite algebra. And this makes a con condensed string. And then applying algebraic K theory, we get a condensed spectrum. And then they have this process of um, solidification. And I think they can show that this is a fiber sequence of condensed spectra. Um, so at least this guy here is the same as continuous K-theory. And if they can show what they expect here, the line above, then this is also the same as the, um, should be the same as the K-theory of the addict spaces they construct. So uh, one question like to follow up. Um, so I mean, this thing on the right is, is the solidification. It's a condensed spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. um, but um, continuous K-theory is a pro-spectrum. So is, is it like you, you take the limit in condensed spectra and you get the same thing? Yeah, so this is in condensed spectra, this limit. Uh-huh. I'm saying just like where, uh, because continuous K-theory lives in a different category. So I'm just wondering how you, how, which category the comparison lives in. Um, so you can, from prospector, at least if you look at countably indexed prospector, you get a functor to the category of condensed spectra. And you know that in both categories, you have like as constant objects, the, I have some delay now, of spectra as constant objects. And here, objects like are formal limits of spectra. And then you can just look at these guys as constant spectra here, constant condensed spectra, and then you take the limit in the category of condensed spectra. And this defines um, you in functor, which sends like the fiber sequence um, of continuous case theory I talked about to this fiber sequence. So the image of continuous case theory under this functor is their thing, but I cannot provide like details. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. That's exactly what okay. I was asking. For, for for the preprint coming out, yeah. Thanks. Are there any other questions? And I have another one. Okay, you can discuss it in the break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's thank Christian again. Oh wait, hold on, there is a question. Um, okay. Uh, Elden is asking if you can use your theorem to reprove a result of uh, CHWW, I'm not completely sure who he means, that says almost the same thing. Continuous Hesemeyer, I don't know who's CHWW. Weibel. Elden, can you speak up? <laughs> Cortina, Sazemeyer, Weibel, Walker. Well, okay. Uh, I think uh, we can discuss, continue this discussion during the break since it's getting a bit. Yeah. So let's thank Christian again. Stop the recording. Yeah.